Look, I know that the words good value and RTX 4090 don't really go well together, but still, if you want a good value RTX 4090, then MSI has some pretty strong contenders, such as the MSI RTX 4090 Supreme X. Which I still think that Supreme is a very awkward name to pronounce, but whatever, that's a conversation for a different day. This card, starting out at just $1700, is one of the cheaper ways that you can get into the RTX 4090 business. So is it worth it? Well, surprisingly, it actually does a lot of things better than many other, even more expensive RTX 2090s. Starting off with performance, right out of the bat, you have a 105 megahertz factory overclock. That is actually fairly decent, and in fact, you can take it up to 120 megahertz with the special Snowflake MSI Center app, which, locking performance behind arbitrary software aside, is still a fairly decent factory overclock, and you have no issues manually overclocking it further, seeing how it's a thick card with a lot of cooling. In fact, it is a quad slot card that is way wider, longer and thicker than the base RTX 4090, so you have a lot of heatsink to work with, not to mention three high performance fans. Not to mention the fact that unlike most other manufacturers, MSI are putting this thickness to good use, because while most cars rely on just two PCE brackets for support, even though they can manage more, here MSI uses three at the back, giving this card much more support. Now naturally given its length and weight, GPU sag can still happen on the other side of the card, which for that, MSI included a anti-sag holder, which is probably one of the more ghetto and ugly solutions that we see in this generation to GPU sag. A lot of our companies have much better looking anti-sag brackets, but whatever. A free bonus is a free bonus. Well, free. You're still paying $1700 for this thing, but let's get back to the back of the card for a second, because here we see one of the biggest disappointments of this entire graphics card, and that is the fact that you only get one single HDMI. It's a big trend we've been seeing this generation, but it's a bad trend nonetheless. It is literally making these cards worse than their predecessor in that aspect, where we've been seeing two or even three HDMI per graphics card, and one is just simply unacceptable, especially seeing how HDMI 2.1 is the faster option compared to DisplayPort 1.4, seeing how, you know, these graphics cards don't even support DisplayPort 2.0. It's one of those things that are becoming normal that shouldn't be normal, like all of us all of a sudden talking about World War 3, except for that this is of course a much bigger deal. And if you're an RGB snob, you'll be happy to find that is some RGB on this graphics card, though it's very minimal, which is starting to become a theme with a lot of the more budget budget RTX 2090s this generation, so either the margins are a lot tighter than we thought, or minimalism is coming back when it comes to RGB. And the rest of the card also looks absolutely fantastic, though you also find that there's no extra gimmicks that a lot of other companies like to introduce. Gimmicks such as screens, waifus, or whatever else has been showing up on graphics cards are nowhere to be found here. It is a very pure GPU experience, and I kind of like it, and for $1700, well, you could definitely go worse. However, seeing how you can get the water-cooled version of this graphics card for just $50 more, well, that is a potential thing to consider. Not to mention that at $1,700, you also get competition from a lot of other people, including Gigabyte, which I recently covered on this channel, so definitely check out those videos up in the iCards. But it is still a great graphics card that does a few things nicely, though Sally still falls victim to only having one HDMI port, but I'm just kind of tired of complaining about it at this point. Just kidding, I will never stop complaining about this until manufacturers fix it. So if you want to buy this or any other RTX 2090 yourself, then make sure to use our Amazon links down in the video description below. And if you want to help support the kind of tech journalism we do here, then make sure to check out our Patreon, because even just one single dollar a month truly goes a long way, while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Justin Rage, Ella Ronyak, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so so much support truly goes a long way. Down you're going to find our merch store, our Discord server and our social media links as well. But anyway that's it, it's I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to subscribe, like whatever and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone, good bye.